So welcome, everybody. Um, I'm really excited. I'm joining you today, um, both as an educator and somebody who is an Adobe education leader. Um, and today we're going to talk about bite-sized lessons with Premiere Rush. So to get started, I just wanted to hear from all of you in the chat window a little bit about how many of you have done some video editing before, whether it's in Premiere Pro or Premiere Rush. Yay, Melissa's done lots of Rush. Lisa, Leia, little Premiere Pro, major rushing, not yet in Rush, so this is great. So I actually have started with Premiere Pro in the beginning, so it's great to see how many Premiere Pro people are in here. Um, and one of the questions I always get all the time is, if I know how to use Premiere Pro, why would I use Premiere Rush? Isn't that kind of a watered down version? Um, and my focus today is from a teacher standpoint of how do you make things really easy and simple and straightforward and why Premiere Rush might be your new go-to editing application. So I'm going to start by sharing my screen and going over a brief presentation. And what I wanted to do with all of you today is kind of talk about um, how easy and intuitive it is. Jason, I love your comments. Um, and it's really easy to get going and um, kind of just, you know, <laughs> dive into video editing. Whether you are an experienced video editor and you're somebody who has used Premiere Pro before um, or somebody that has never done video editing and finds it a little bit intimidating, we're just going to kind of dive in and talk about how this could really help your teaching. So before I get started, I just wanted to talk a little bit about um, what I do. So as I mentioned, I'm super excited to hear um, be here at Learning Human. Um, and I do a lot of work with Adobe and teach some online courses and everything ranging from Premiere Pro, Premiere Rush. Um, I also teach things like Photoshop, Illustrator, Character Animator, Adobe Aero, which is our new AR application. Um, so as we go along, if you have any ideas or things that you just want to chime in with, feel free to let me know in the chat window. I'm going to be checking that. I have two windows up um, so I can see all of you and see the chat window and see the presentation. So let me know if you have things as we're going through um, that you want to chime in with. Um, so super fun facts about me before I start to give you a little bit of my background. I work and teach in the media arts and culture department at Occidental College in Los Angeles, California. So that is my full-time job. Over there I teach digital media um, including Photoshop, Illustrator, HTML, and CSS. I also teach motion design primarily done in After Effects. And I also support all the other production classes. So I will come in and guest lecture about cinematography, lighting, things like that. Um, love filmmaking. So I also teach over at Art Center College of Design in Pasadena and teach filmmaking there to middle school and high school students on the weekends. Um, I just figured, you know, you all seem like a fun bunch. I've been on the Slack channel with a couple of you. So I also want to share, I have an African dwarf frog. Um, and probably like a lot of you who are educators in this room, I have done so much online teaching due to COVID-19. How many of you have taught online so far? We had that abrupt shift in the spring semester. Yes, massive. Jason, Lisa, I'm loving all these thumbs up. It has been a thing. So what I want to do today is talk about how we can strategize and have really effective, but not a lot of extra work on us, um, fall semester. So I know it was kind of this abrupt sudden thing where suddenly we're thrust into this online environment. Um, and especially teaching filmmaking online, it was a struggle to make that transition because it is very hands-on. Um, so this is... Um, where we currently were about a month ago. Um, <laughs> Melissa's like, what's your frog's name? My frog's name is Mario, for anybody that cares. I had Mario and Luigi. Luigi didn't make it um, a couple months ago, but Mario is still there. That was Mario in the picture. Um, so this is a picture of what we were thinking about doing. Um, and I'm sure that all of you, <laughs> especially with your thumbs up, and I saw a lot of nodding um, about how hard it is to transition to online teaching when you have so many expectations coming in from administration. So these are the things that we had talked about so far, that all classes should have some kind of synchronous component, but classes should also have asynchronous components for students that cannot attend the synchronous classes, and all learning experiences should be impactful. 
So this kind of looks like we are doing double the amount of work, um, having both a really meaningful synchronous online experience where we're meeting with all the students. And we have online classes for students that might be in different time zones um, who also have to get the material, um, but also it should be something that's meaningful for the students that did attend the synchronous class. So there's just lots of things that we are kind of suddenly expected to do. Um, and so the great thing, yes, <laughs> for those of you asking about the tent picture, this was one iteration of something that we were thinking about doing um, on Occidental's campus was building these big tents on these fields with social distancing. So for those of you unfamiliar with the COVID situation in Los Angeles, um, it's pretty bad. We are not reopening anything at this point um, and schools are all going to be online in the fall. So um, this was, Bob, <laughs> I like it, Canvas. Um, I, love, I love how funny people are in these classes too. This has been one of my favorite conferences that I've been to. Um, so with these tents, the idea was, is the teacher would be standing up front and I don't know, for those of you who have taught media before, even in something like Photoshop or Premiere, students are squinting at the screen already in a lab because you have like all these different menu settings and you have to zoom in and it's very hard to see. And so in the tent situation, we have to sit six feet apart. Um, and by the time you get to the back of the classroom, you are now like 36 feet away from this projector. We are outside, so it's definitely a lot brighter. And their idea was we, for the people in the back, could also be on Zoom so the people in the back of the class can be watching the lecture up close. So I'm sure for all of you who have taught so far, that sounds crazy and not like the most effective way to learn. Um, yeah, so Lisa, online for everything, except for things like woodworking. Yeah, pretty much the same thing over at Art Center where we have our lab classes open, um, but we're going to be teaching the majority of the classes online. And so looking at this, they wanted to know if every student had a laptop and had software, could I teach video editing in a tent outside? Um, and I mean, feasibly, yes, yes, you could do this. Is this the best way to instruct your students in the middle of a pandemic? Probably not. Um, so we really pushed for online classes and this is where Premiere Rush is such a time saver. So let's first dive in and talk about why we should do this. So first, students don't wanna watch a recorded three hour lecture. Um, nobody wants to watch a recorded three hour lecture. And um, the idea was a lot of people in the spring semester were simply just recording their Zoom class and then putting that online. And students that were unable to attend the class would just watch the whole three hour lecture. Um, students want something that's short, engaging and accessible. So if they're doing their homework and they're looking for a specific part about how to do something or they wanna recap about a specific topic, um, much easier to have shorter videos that have titles for them to click on and watch rather than scrubbing through a three hour lecture and trying to find that part where you're talking about it. From the teacher side, we spend so much time doing prep. Um, I know if you're an educator, especially this year, you have probably spent so much time um, doing both your classes in person and doing a transition of classes and then making sure that your students are keeping up with a hybrid or high flux model, whatever your school is using. Um, so we want something that's quick, easy, and really effective for our students, which leads me to short videos for the win. So it's great that we have so many video editors in here already. And if you haven't yet dived into video editing, I would encourage you as we go through this presentation to kind of follow along with me um, and to start, let's talk about video. Like why would you want to create video? So I want to hear from you in the chat window. Why video? Why not a web page? Why not just a fun infographic? Why specifically video when recreating material for lessons to put online? I know some of you are doing this already, so I want to hear how you're using it as well in your class. Perfect. Yeah, Jason, I love the exclamation points. Action, audio, movement, personality. You can capture all these things so much better in a video format. 
Brent, exactly. I really try to differentiate my lessons for different types of learners. And this way you can really engage both audio learners, visual learners. We can put things on the screen. We can re reiterate things that we're saying. Thad, yes, this is very much a video generation. Um, and they are on YouTube more than anybody has been in the past. And YouTube is also great because if you don't have a service at your school that provides closed captioning, YouTube can do that as well. Holly says, active, not static. Very good. Yeah, we want to create something that's fast, dynamic, engaging. Bruce, sometimes you do need to show. Yes, rather than writing out a tutorial about how to do something in Photoshop, for example, or Premiere Rush, it's much easier to do a screen recording and kind of share your students what you're doing. Lisa, love that you teach math. Yes, math explainer videos can be really, really great, especially if you have a tablet and you can pair that with your voice and graphics and recording. Awesome. Yes, yes, I like how you're demonstrating proficiencies. Yes, where you need to present language concepts. So some of you might not specifically be teaching media classes, but this is something that you can do across the board in terms of like English classes or math classes, science classes. These are all things that we can incorporate into creating really short, meaningful videos. Like Tanya saying, teaching in three ways, written, pictures, videos. Bob, personality is so important, showing your human side, especially when students kind of are isolated during this time um, and are just staring at a screen and interacting with mainly static material. Being able to create a short video that has you in their house talking to them enthusiastically really goes a long way. Um, and yes, Bruce, great that a lot of my students, even if they are attending a class in person, have a hard time getting down all the notes. And that's why part of the title of my presentation was, can you repeat that? Because a lot of times we're covering so much in one session that students will be taking notes and I'll give handouts and we'll have a recap online, but it's a great way to kind of recap in a friendly, personable way about what we covered in class. Yeah. Raja, very good. That visual is 70% of communication that we really want to be able to show our students what we're doing rather than just giving them an audio recording or an online article. Um, yes, Brent, really good point about YouTube captioning that we want to make sure that it is, check it. Definitely check your YouTube recording. I've had a couple of things um, where my captions were really far off from what I was saying. Um, so make sure that you proofread and go over that as well. Great, so let's dive in and talk about what is Adobe Rush. So for those of you who have not tried Rush before, Rush is one of my favorite applications because you can basically use it anywhere and it's so fast and easy. So Rush is designed to work across devices. So whether you have a Mac or a PC or an iPad or a desktop computer, um, you can work interchangeably. So you could start on your phone and start editing and then put it on your computer or vice versa. And it's really great because very few apps work so seamlessly across devices. Um, so this was one thing that was very exciting to me because sometimes after a long day, I'm sure all of you feel the same way, you don't want to be on your computer anymore. And it's great to be able to take what I'm working on and just like sit on my iPad, lay on my couch and continue editing my video. Um, and if you don't have it yet, Premiere Rush is really easy to get and you can actually start for free. So if you don't have an Adobe Creative Cloud license, you can download it for free and you can do up to three exports for free before you have to um, enroll and start paying. And um, if you extend past that, you can also still kind of practice using Premiere Rush, you just wouldn't be able to export. But if you do have a Creative Cloud license, you can get this um, as part of the package and I would really recommend checking it out. So I want to show you next how to get it. Um, so let's switch over. Can everybody still see my screen? Yes, awesome. So if I just Google Premiere Rush in Google and I click on that link at the top, you'll see over here that we can start for free. And if you click that in, thank you, Melissa, for dropping that in. It will say now installing and if you don't have the Creative Cloud desktop app yet, it will prompt you to install that. And once you have that inserted, you are ready to go. 
So I'll give everybody just a minute. If you want to follow along, you can get Premiere Rush. And if you have Premiere Rush, if you want to open that up on your computer, we have some assets for you where you can download um, what we are going to be working on today and follow along. At the end of this, I would encourage you to continue to work on your project and share on social media. Thank you, Melissa, for sharing that. So if you would like to download the assets, we've uploaded some on a Google Drive folder. And you can see these are the things that we're going to be working with today. Um, I would just download all and put them on your computer to get started. And then open up Premiere Rush when you are ready. And for today, we are going to go over how you can create a really quick, simple video. And I'm going to kind of show you my method for keeping the amount of time that I spend doing these down and um, show you some really cool features in Premiere Rush. So I'm going to start by opening up Premiere Rush. And when you open up Premiere Rush, my interface might look a little bit different from what you might be doing because I am currently on a laptop computer. So if you're using the mobile version, um, some of the folders are just arranged a little bit differently. But you want to start by opening up Premiere Rush and then clicking on Create a New Project. So to access files, you can look on your desktop, your downloads, anything on your computer, but you also have the option of saving it if you do have an Adobe Creative Cloud license into the Creative Cloud. So I like doing that because like I mentioned, love just kind of laying down after a long day on my iPad and doing my prep work there. Um, and that way it syncs really seamlessly across my devices, but you do have the option of saving directly onto your computer as well. So today we are going to start with our starter assets. So first thing that I love in Premiere Rush is that you can kind of do a pre-edit um, of what you were thinking about doing before you even dive into the editing software program. And this is such a time saver when I'm teaching. So typically when I teach, I gather all the things that I've used in my PowerPoint presentation or my Google slideshow. Um, so I might have some graphics, um, I probably have the recorded lecture from our Zoom presentation, and I'll just bring all those things in here, um, and then kind of decide what order I want to recap them in. So to create the order, I'm going to go through and just click on things in the order that I think I might want to show them in. And I don't necessarily, this isn't a locked order, so I can move things around, and I don't even have to have all my media at this stage. But this is one really cool feature about Rush that I want to show you first. So if I click and I'm going to say I'm going to start with this one, you can see it labels it with a one and adds it to kind of my pre-sequence down here at the bottom. So I'll say I'm going to start with that one and then I'm going to say this should be two, three, four, five, and six. I'm going to give my project a title down here. This is going to be an overview of character animator. And then when I'm done, I'm going to hit this blue create button in the bottom. And it's going to prepare my media and then put that into my timeline. Uh oh, there we go. All right, so, and I can see here I have in my timeline, this is all in order and it's ready to go. And we are now in Premiere Rush. So for those of you who have just used Premiere Pro before, you can see it's kind of a really boiled down version of all the essential parts that you need to create a really engaging and dynamic video. Um, a quick tour of what's going on in here. In the upper left, we have a blue add button. So if you realize later on you need more media, you want to add a title or a voiceover, you can click this blue button over here. Over here is my bin, so I can see all of my current project assets that I'm currently working with. And then down here are my basic editing tools. So when I have a clip selected and I have my cursor at a certain point, Scissors is going to split that clip. And if you're unsure of what things are or you want keyboard shortcuts, if you hover over any of these tools, it'll also give you a keyboard shortcut and allow you to see um, a short animation of what each one does. We can duplicate underneath or delete a clip. And then down here, we have some track toggling options in terms of expanding your audio and controlling your tracks. So typically when I'm working, I will expand my audio and show my control tracks. My control tracks allow me to see my audio um, and record directly onto my timeline. 
So as a teacher, this is so beneficial because um, I basically do a quick recap right after my class is done so that the information is fresh. And I like to record it straight into my timeline and kind of cut my media around that part. So to begin, I'm just gonna scrub through and show you what we have so far. So I have this opening splash title. This is from Pexels video. Pexels is a really cool free site. I can drop the link in the chat as well. And you can um, download free pictures, free videos, and it's great because it's really high quality videos. Um, and I usually use these for opening titles and things to keep my students more engaged. Um, awesome, thank you for that, Melissa. And then if we scroll through, we can see that I currently have all my content in order. So these are screenshots. If you have attended any of our character animator sessions, some of these might seem a little bit familiar. And I am a big Mandalorian Baby Yoda fan, um, or the child as he is officially called. Um, so I like to throw in some fun memes to keep my students engaged at the end. So as we're scrolling through this, um, we can see we have basic editing tools on the left-hand side over here. Over on the right-hand side, these are things that are a little bit more specific. So things like adding titles, transitions, color effects, we can do speed. This is new if you haven't downloaded the latest version of Rush. You can also now adjust the speed within a timeline. Um, some audio effects in there, and then things like cropping and rotating. So I'm going to start just kind of by going through what I would typically say in a class. The idea here is to keep it short. So I'm gonna show you how easy it is to create a voiceover and kind of cut your media around it. So let's say that I've just completed my character animator class and I'm ready to do my quick recap of what happened. So I'm gonna click this target track for recording button so that I can record directly onto this track and then when I click that red button, it's gonna give me a countdown and I'm going to start and do a sample lesson. So here we go. Here are some character animator tips to get you started on this week's assignment. First, design your character in Photoshop or Illustrator. Then bring your character into Character Animator. Pro tip, Dress like your character to ensure a good performance. Remember that you can be anyone. Don't forget to make an appointment if you need help. So we're gonna keep it short, simple, straight to the point. What I love about being able to see my audio tracks in here as well is I can see the waveform and see the parts where I'm talking, which makes it really easy to kind of split up my clips. So as I go through, um, let's, I'm gonna turn on my audio as well um, so that all of you can hear as we go through. And I'm going to start by kind of just splitting things up. So I'm gonna click on my audio track over here and move my cursor to that first gap and use my scissors tool to split it. And I'm gonna go through and kind of split up all my different sections of the things that I want my students to focus on. All right, next thing is I'm going to add an opening title to show what class this is. So I have a lot of presets in here. Um, yeah, so script is super helpful, great question. You can see I was actually reading a quick script Usually for my classes, um, to keep things short, I don't even put a script together um, unless I'm doing a tutorial, in which case I want it to be um, really succinct and to the point and make sure I cover everything. Oftentimes, especially for my middle school and high school classes, I kind of want to recap what we did and I'll have a slide presentation that I just showed. So I'll go back through my slide presentation and do a quick overview of what happened. Yeah. Brent, great point about if you do have a script, it will definitely help with your captioning on YouTube. So that's another great reason. And Jason's saying, yes, it's very helpful for so many reasons, especially if you're camera shy. Um, now at this point, I've done so many online presentations, but in the beginning, I think talking in front of a camera was oftentimes even more pressure than talking in front of a class because I felt like I was being recorded and it was there forever. Um, so yes, if it definitely can be helpful to have a script as well. 
All right. So in the beginning, I'm going to add my title, kind of letting us know what class period this is. So I'm going to come over to the upper right and click on titles. And you can see in my titles panel, I have a bunch of presets that I can choose from. And you even have the option of integrating with Adobe Stock and seeing more titles. So if you were looking for something extra fancy, um, you do have the option of downloading titles from Adobe Stock as well. I'm going to keep it basic for this presentation and start with something. If I scroll down, I have just some really basic things like a modern title, for example. So to use that, I'm just going to click and drag where I want it to go in my presentation. And you can see that a lot of our titles in here might come with an animation and some of these don't. So you can see um, as we go through, as we scrub through and give it a quick play, this one does have an animation where we have this bar dropping down. To edit any of the titles, super easy. If I double click on the title to edit, it's gonna show up in the right hand side. And basic things that you would have in any kind of editing um, thing like Google Docs or Word, we can pick our font, our style, things like that. But what's also really great is you can edit basically everything that you see in this block. So some of these have graphical elements as well that will show up on the right hand side that you'll be able to edit those a little bit further. So we'll do something like this is July 28th, 2020. Is it July 28th, 24th? This is what happens when uh, we're not in class. So you can see there's my text title, but then this component also had a shape built in. So if I twirl down my shape, I can see I have my shape color here. And if I want it to be different so that it's matching maybe my background video that I got from Pexels, I can easily come in and change the color and kind of stylize that a little bit more. Yes, I do live in the future. All right, and then I'm going to scoot this over just a little bit so that um, it's not directly on top of my video. And we can see if we play this. And then there I want my video to stop. Um, because you can see here I have a lot of really cool just ink flowing after that part. So I'm going to trim my video by hovering over the end. And when I have a clip selected, you can see that as I hover over the end of that clip, I get this really useful tool that allows me to drag in. And I'm just going to drag in on my timeline like so. You can see though, as I'm doing that, it's kind of cutting my audio a bit as well. And I don't want that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to leave this for right now and I'm going to do a lot of my trimming. So this is what's different about Premiere Pro where when you cut in Premiere Pro, it doesn't auto ripple and kind of um, all go to the beginning. So as we're doing edits, I'm going to go through and move things around and then do a tighter edit at the very end. So I'm going to kind of position everything first. So the next part I have here is if I listen to this clip, So we can see here I am designing my stuff in Photoshop and Illustrator and this is going to happen a little bit closer to this red guy over here. So we're just going to kind of shuffle things around. And then I have over here, this is just a screen recording. So this is often something that I'll grab from my lecture if I'm using it on Zoom and I'm doing a screen share. I'll come in and bring in my Zoom screen share recording and cut to the part that I'm talking about so that students can see a really quick recap about what that section was. So I have that section there. And then up next, let's say that I've imported something like this. This is another screenshot, an image that we were using in one of the slides and it's much, much larger than I need it to be. So on the right hand side, I can easily scale this one over here. My crop and rotate allows me to scale things up and down or move things up and down. Um, remember when you're scaling, you typically wanna maintain proportions so we don't squish or squash anything. So I'm gonna make sure that's checked and drag that down to rescale. You can also scale and move things around just by clicking in this window directly and using your bounding box here where I can scale up and down and move this around. So I'm gonna fill my frame and have my image there. And then to put my second audio clip kind of underneath that one. And then I'm going to continue. And here I have, did anybody attend Phil's really great Shakespeare session with character animator? Did anybody join this one? 
Yeah, Holly, this was awesome. So this is where, this is the true embodiment of, well, um, for those of you unfamiliar with Character Animator, Character Animator is a motion tracking application that allows you to talk and it kind of maps onto an animated character as you're talking and moving around. Um, so as Phil was becoming Shakespeare, he literally was Shakespeare, complete with an outfit and hair and everything. So this is where we're really embodying our character um, in what we're trying to do. So you can see the challenge over here is as I click on fill, I still have my audio from my previous thing that I wanted students to focus on. So I'm just going to, this is, I'm not even playing it back. This is how easy it is. I'm just gonna drag the end of this to be the same length as my audio clip so that students can hear and see that on screen at the same time. And then I'm gonna take my next part and drag that over so that that lines up with fill and I'm gonna extend fill to the end of that audio clip. And at the very end, I'm gonna go back through and listen to everything. And maybe for Phil as well, we're gonna scale this up a little bit and move Phil so that Phil is a little bit more prominent in the screen. And then I'm gonna do the same thing, last recording. Hopefully this is all starting to make sense. We're gonna drag and here I have, um, what's really great is you can import any type of file and so this one specifically, I'm bringing in an animated GIF file, and we can argue if it's pronounced GIF or GIF. I like to go with what the creator said, even though it makes no sense. Um, so we have an animated GIF file in here, and you can see that it plays really well, just dropped into my timeline. So what's great about this is I have an HD video. This is a high quality MOV file. I have my screen recording, which showed up as an MP4 file. I have just a still image. This is a PNG file. And then I have this animated GIF file and I didn't have to convert anything. I just threw it all into my timeline and it just works all of a sudden. So then I'm gonna take in my last part and put in some Baby Yoda. And now I can go through and now that I have everything arranged and kind of sequenced, start to make finer tune edits. So I'm just gonna take the end of this and now you can see I'm bringing that in and really keeping things pretty snappy. Um, I'm gonna trim that all to my audio. And again, I'm not even listening to my audio at this point. I'm just taking a listen and seeing um, parts that I can cut. So if I left too much of a gap, we can bring that in um, and then kind of lining everything up. So we're gonna go through and listen to what we have so far and see how we did. We're not hearing any sound. Oh, you're not. Let me, nope. let me see if we can fix that. Yeah, um, you might have to unshare because Zoom has that little. Right, yeah, I did, I checked that. Oh. Yeah. Let's try that again. I'm guilty of forgetting to click that all the time. That's why I was <laughs> like, it's that. <laughs> all right, can we hear this now? Let's give it a try. Still not getting any audio. That's weird. Um, here, let me try, let me try interrupting your screen share. Okay. And we'll see if we can get, you're getting audio from that? I am, yeah. Okay, okay. So maybe that'll restart Zoom a little bit. <laughs> All right. Okay, Let's, try? Yeah. I mean, worst case scenario, you have all heard me do the voiceover. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so let's give this one more try. So we'll share, share computer sound. Yeah, Lisa pointed out um, it might be a headphone issue. Sometimes Zoom doesn't like having multiple sources of audio Oh, okay. Let me let me unplug for a minute then. All right. <laughs> we just test out everything. No. <laughs> oh well. Well, we've heard the the audio. Did that work? No. <laughs> okay. So we're just gonna skip the audio part for right now. Um. Yeah, um, let's see. 
So let's see if I can switch to the Zoom audio device and see if that helps as well. We'll give this one more try, and if not, we'll just keep moving on. Here are some character animator tips to get you started on this week's assignment. Any luck there? That worked. Yay. Awesome. Yay. Thanks, Bruce. Yay. Thank you, Bruce. First, design your character in Photoshop or Illustrator. Then, bring your character into Character Animator. Pro tip, dress like your character to ensure a good performance. Remember that you can be anyone. Don't forget to make an appointment if you need help. So we're going to do a quick, um, we'll listen really quickly to how that went through, and then we'll go through and trim everything. So we can see that our audio is a little bit out of sync from our video currently, so I'm just going to slide things over so that everything is lining up. And we'll give that a little bit more room, and we'll move this audio file under our pro tip here. And then we'll end on this Baby Yoda slide. So a couple of other things that I want to add um, is in the beginning, after we added our title here, you can see if we wanted to edit our title more, we would just double click on the title to get back to this. And that's the way that any of these panels work. So once we add effects, if we double click on an effect or a transition, it's going to pop open these windows on the side. So let's talk about a couple more of these. Um, typically, as I go through my videos, I like to reiterate what I'm saying out loud, like we talked about in the beginning about creating material for differentiated learning. So in addition to listening to me saying something, I'm also going to put in something with like a lower thirds title so that people can see what's actually happening on the screen if they don't have audio on um, or if it's easier to see. So I'm going to grab this basic lower thirds title and drop that on on top of my video and just write something on here like and so here because we are white on white i'm going to double click on that and change my text color so that it stands out a little bit more and then in here i also have a really easy slider so that you don't have to guess what font size you're looking for. You can just visually see it on the screen and adjust the size as well. You can see on this one in particular, I have two lines of text with two different styles. Some of the other headers um, are a little bit different, so you can pick them or manipulate them or create more than one line. Um, I just wanted to show you two different styles there. And I would go through my presentation and kind of add titles for each one as I went through. To reiterate what I'm talking about, and then maybe give some extra information at the end. Um, like maybe on this one, we'll have some fun animated. I use the subscribe now a lot um, to kind of use it as a call to action for things that my students are supposed to do. Um, and I'll change this to something like, that, that's, letting them know they should schedule an appointment to go over their project sooner than later. And it has just this really fun animation where I don't have to do anything too much to it. Okay, so as I go through, if I realize I've imported something, like let's say Baby Yoda, for example, looks a little bit washed out and not quite as bright and engaging as the rest because this is just a free meme that I found on the internet. Um, so if I click on that, I can do some color adjustments by clicking over here and clicking on these three circles that opens up my color panel. And in this color panel, you have lots of different presets that you can use. Typically, when I'm doing my classwork, I will go over to the edit tab and just adjust basic things like exposure and contrast. So um, we don't have something like a Lumetri window that we would in Premiere Pro, but this is really great because you can visually see what you're doing and just use some really basic sliders to do some adjustments in here. So you can see if I toggle this button at the top, just by bringing up the exposure and contrast, this was my before and this is my after, and it already looks brighter and more engaging. Especially with memes um, and animated GIFs, I will bring in lots of random things to make my lessons funny. Um, and animated GIFs in particular sometimes are pretty short when I bring them in. 
So one thing that I often do is extend the length of a video. And over here, right under the color, you have the option for speed. So speed is something, one of the newest features in Premiere Rush, where I can click here under clip duration, and I can either make the duration longer, which will then affect the speed in turn, or I can decide if I want my clip to be faster or slower, and the clip duration will adjust accordingly. If you're getting Diana, fancy, yeah. We have 10 minutes left. Awesome, thank you. Mm -hmm. If you're getting fancy and you want to adjust um, and ramp up the speed at a certain point, you can do that as well. I don't use that a lot in my lessons, um, but that's also something to play with. One of the big things I will say, if you are using this with Zoom that has audio and video together, make sure that you check maintain audio pitch if you are uh, making something faster or slower, like fa slightly faster or slower. Otherwise, you will sound like you inhaled helium um, or suddenly you're extra low. Um, so typically I will also separate my audio and video so that things like that don't happen and I can make my screen recordings a lot faster. When I'm recording in Zoom and I'm screen sharing, um, usually I'll take maybe like 20 minutes to go over something that could really be done in 10 if I'm doing it without talking and moving a little bit faster. So it's a great way to take your screen recording and kind of ramp up your speed in here or slow down animated GIFs. You also have in here options for transitions. So we have some basic transitions um, and usually I'll fade out my video at the end so we can dip to black and I would just click, drag that onto my clip and it adds this orange transition at the end. And I can click that and extend that um, for how I want it to be. Let's zoom in a little bit. I can click directly on the transition and decide how long I want that transition to happen. And you can see over here, I also have audio. So if you realize your audio is not clear or you have a hissing in the background, you have some really easy to clean up audio sliders in here. So when I clicked on my voice, you can see that Premiere Rush automatically detected that this is a voice track. And it's really good at detecting whether it's voice or music. Um, so if you need to change it, you can click on the change type down here. But what I really love about this is you can reduce your background noise and easily drag the slider and this works really, really well. Um, I have been recording a lot lately with an air conditioner on. I know that's like a big no-no, but it's so hot in LA. Um, and this is a great job of taking out my air conditioning sound just by adjusting the slider. Um, reduce echo, I will say, is also handy, but for those of you who have done video and audio editing, you know that there's not a great way to take out echo. Um, this will make you pretty soft, so especially with these two, I would suggest starting pretty low and then bringing your um, slider up to achieve the effect that you're looking for. All right, so quick recap. We have titles, easy to add, lots of presets, click and drag to put it on top, transitions, we have the basic ones that you might need. Again, click and drag to put it on top. We have color effects where we can use a built-in preset, um, making sure first to select the clip that you want affected. You can also, where we were doing it, was in the edit tab where we can manually adjust exposure and contrast. And we can adjust the speed using our speed ramp over here by adjusting the duration or the speed directly, and these two correlate with each other. We have audio where we can clean up our voice really easily by clicking on some audio and adjusting these different options here. And we have the option to resize and kind of scale things, which is useful when you bring in graphics to make them fill the screen. Yeah, so Holly, let's take a look at our final video. Um, so here we go, let's give it a play. Here are some character animator tips to get you started on this week's assignment. First, design your character in Photoshop or Illustrator. Then, bring your character into Character Animator. Pro tip, dress like your character to ensure a good performance. Remember that you can be anyone. Don't forget to make an appointment if you need help. Awesome, so you can see there we had a little bit of an audio glitch, so I'm just gonna trim the end of that. And then we're ready to export. So when we're exporting, um, 
Yeah, so Gus, great question. So there isn't one to capture the computer screen. I like to use Screen Recorder. Um, I'm on a Mac, it's about $5 in the store, but I use that for everything. You can also use QuickTime and do a screen record there. Um, but in terms of capturing video directly in Rush, you can't do that, but you can do that voiceover feature. That's what we covered in the beginning. And to get to that again, we click on control tracks that expands our left-hand side. We arm our track for recording, and then we can record directly onto our timeline. But for screen recording, I often will just bring in my Zoom recording if I did a screen share um, or do a quick screen share using screen recorder on my computer. So when you're finished, this is one thing that I love about Rush is you can share directly to YouTube, Facebook, Instagram. So for example, my class has its own YouTube site and I don't even have to go into my web browser and log into YouTube. You can just click on YouTube and if you have signed into YouTube, it will publish there directly from Rush. So this is such a huge time saver and you can see that as I was going through my tutorial, we didn't really spend that much time putting it together and it was like a great recap of what we covered in class. So to export, um, sometimes also I will upload straight to my Moodle page. So I will export it as a local file. So we'll give it a good name. So we'll say overview of character animator. Make sure you know where you are saving it. And then under advanced settings, you don't really have to change anything. We can see that we're exporting here at uh, 1080p. You also have the option um, to export it as a square video or a horizontal video. Um, I typically, since I'm such a film person, um, am very much a fan of landscape horizontal videos as opposed to vertical videos, but vertical videos and square videos can also be great on social media, particularly if you're posting to Instagram, if you have an Instagram class site. Um, but once we're done, you can scrub through here and just make sure that everything looks good in your timeline. And when you're done, you're gonna click export. So I can't reiterate enough um, for everybody and for my students, make sure you know where you're saving it because it does take a minute to export and there's nothing worse than exporting your video and then having no idea where it is on your computer. Um, awesome. Yeah, so, Great, so Melissa, yes, you can record on your, if you have a phone or a tablet. Um, on the desktop, there is not a feature to directly record your screen in Rush, I believe. Unless somebody has it open and you can find it, then please let me know. But I think um, as of the latest version, you cannot do that yet. You're, you're, yes. I just had to double check because I forgot you could actually do that in the app. Yeah. But that's, I think that's one of the things about all these apps in general, you know, Adobe is constantly coming out with new stuff. And so there are features sometimes where I open the app and I go, wait, that wasn't there three days ago. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But I was opening it up recently and I was like, wait, we can do speed ramping now, which is actually <laughs> really fun because I was making an explosion and it was just like this static picture and I just made it very much more exciting at the end of that. <laughs> All right, so we have like two minutes left. I wanted to see if there's any questions that I can answer. Any questions about video, filmmaking in general, Premiere Rush? Okay, well, a couple of you are typing. I wanted to just reiterate what my task is for all of you. So your creative challenge after this workshop, create a short video that highlights something interesting that you have learned this week. There's been so many interesting stuff and a lot of people have shared screenshots and things on our Slack channel. So if you're looking for media, um, feel free to peruse that as well. But um, the idea here is that most of our workshops that you've attended have been an hour. So my challenge to you is think of something that you can recap in a two to three minute video showing some examples. Maybe you made a project in another um, workshop and do a quick overview for somebody that you would want to share with. Um, and that way you can kind of show what you felt the highlights were while also not subjecting them to watch an hour long recording that might be really cool on YouTube and you should definitely check out our Learning Human channel on YouTube as well. Um, but sometimes we don't all have hours and hours to watch videos. So this is a great way of kind of sharing what you've learned with a colleague. So don't forget, after you made your creative project and you post it on social media, hashtag that with edu creative so that we can follow and like and reshare your work. 
if any of you want to connect with me or have follow-up questions, I'm happy. I'm on every social media, um, so you can have your choice up there, um, or send me an email directly at oxy.edu. And finally, I just wanted to show Greg's slide uh, for all Adobe related professional development. Um, you can contact Greg at Edge Game. It looks like we have a question from Chris. He says, are there template options you recommend? Yeah, Chris, there's so many templates in Premiere Rush. I usually like the modern ones that if you like scroll down, that was the header one that I was using. I would say just make sure that you have a lot of contrast between your text and the background. So some of them have background shapes that are included as well, which could be great um, to kind of separate it out from your video. And then um, making sure that too, you're not using too crazy of a font because um, the whole idea is for students to be able to see things and read it really quickly. Also with titles, I would say if you can read your title out loud and um, get through the whole thing, that's an appropriate amount of time to put that on the screen. Awesome. Well, thank you everyone for joining me today. And I hope that this was informative and fun and that you create some videos and share those with us.